Are you down? That's a rhetorical question. Before me, your actions will show you invested. Throw me no cards. All in your way. So I'm 21st. One more time. Five, four, three. And so I'm 21st. And Burr ain't right. And check it out, man. We got a special guest in this motherfucker. I could have had this nigga episode one, but I did it purposely not to have. You know, you can't utilize your friendships like that and just yeah. take I advantage of shit. Like you got to let these niggas know what you got moving first right. and show that we got some shit going I mean, on. you don't have to. Well, I, well, I chose to you do it that me way. You told what you were doing yeah. like the week before. You I did, I did. So. But I chose to do it that in that manner. I could have had him episode one. This is true. I could have recorded a nigga episode one, hey, but man. here he is today. State your name, beloved. Hey, man, first of all, I like that introduction. Like, if I was running for, like, government office or some shit, I'd let you, like, introduce Besides. my fucking kid. Like, regardless of all that, I'm Cuban K. Jose. Yes. Professionally known as uh, Curtis Eugene. Last name unknown as. I don't know what the government looking for me, man. The last time my phone... <laughs> was having too many calls from like Chicago and Iowa and I live in fucking California so I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna just leave it at Curtis Eugene. If you can find my Instagram, you can probably find me. But anyway, that's where we are with it. I'm doing this. I'm trying to be professional. Swear. Yeah, you, you, you swear to swear. Okay, so I don't want to get my nose out. too close. Aromas in there. What kind of notes do you, hey, do you smell? Do you, what ladies what and gentlemen, gentlemen don't, don't be offended if you see her pop another one during you said, the episode. Wait, what kind of do I do? So I'd you want to do this mustache, for those of you who don't know? Oh, your mustache! I don't want to know what's on your mustache. <laughs> I mean, I woke up and I took a bath and I played basketball. So I mean, okay, imagine well, soaking um, sweat. Okay, because I was hoping there was no TMI shit going on on the camera. We didn't want to hear that. Hawaiian this. munch. Is uh, that yeah. is that why yours is the lowest? Mine is the lowest was, because was, because was, I think I might be lower than her though. Well, yeah, yeah, no, I'm right the lowest there. usually. For you to ask that question means you low. I'm always low because I'm a wino. And I know my shit. And we've been celebrating and trying to push this one wine. I'm going to show you guys the bottle. We can't show it. They not paying us, so we can't well, even. Well, I can't show you guys, so I'm not so going to drop the line. We're going to put the blur over that. We're going to put the blur over that. Because they ain't well, paying us neither. Whatever yeah, the bag well, is. They, the minute they start to pay me. Because you two paying on us regardless. Yeah, so. Uh, well, uh, we I gave those one. I think those, my whole YouTube catalog is pretty much. <laughs> dissolved at this point. But that means we're on the radar and that just means y'all just being haters and if you hate us that means you love us. There is a spectrum and if you saw the last interview you would know that. So hip hop motivation right. <laughs> yeah. shout out to hip hop motivation. Check right? this out. That's big. Yeah, yeah I'm, with that. I'm with that. I'm with that. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. One more time. Cheers. Oh, cheers. Yeah, cheers. 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 I yeah. met you as Cuban before you was K Sosa. This is true. Right. Mm -hmm. so, this is the question you had lined up for me. Yes, I did. So how did you get Cuban? how did you get the name Cuban? Niggas. Mm -hmm. Niggas in what regard? Yeah, tell us the story. Just, just niggas. They niggas wanna know. Regard. Um I'm gonna get into it. I mean, but you asked me how did I get it? I got it from niggas. <laughs> 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 That's the fucking that so we'll go into it. So this is video people are going to see. You can, so you can see what's going on around this one. All right, so as most of y'all can see, there's a lot of shit going on here as far as facial hair and, you know, all that. Under this hat is a lot of hair as well. And when you cut it, it gets wavy naturally. So, you know, this has been going on since I was about fucking 14. Okay. So, um, niggas <laughs> used to be like, you know, I, I, like you used to be like, yo, nigga, you like mixed with Haitian or Dominican or Cuban or some <laughs> shit in Cuba. You know, I don't know why they always kept going back to Cuban. Like, no, nah, that nigga's Cuban. That nigga. And then I'm gonna disgrace myself and say I tried to make it cool, right? Like there was a couple, like one of my homies was one of them, and then there was another cat um, that had the name Japan, and he was like an acronym, it was just another pretty ass nigga, right? <laughs> to Japan. Yeah, it was his name. It was just, he, was a, he, was a, he was a well known nigga in the west side of LA. Shout like, out to shit. Japan. And then, and then, and then, are, and then right. my homeboy took it, yeah. and made, like my best friend took it, and he was a little lesser known, but I still fuck with him. Shout out my nigga D Mace. Um, and it, you know, just another pretty. I was like, damn, that's cool as fuck. And niggas always be saying I'm Cuban, so Cuban, and. This shit is so fucking corny to me right now, but fuck it, man. Like, I'm, I'll tell you, I tried to make it as cool as just another pretty-ass nigga. Yeah. And it was certified universal balling-ass nigga. 
Yeah, that's what. We, so that's Cuban. All right. So all I, right. Try, I tried to make it a thing, right? I, I and it, it. It, it just fell flat on its face. So, so let me tell you. All I right. haven't told too many people that. But you should be really confident about anything that you do. Well, no. I, I mean, at the time, I was and a certified say, universal bone Well, like I have to say, like, after dinner today, somebody was impressed like with his conversation we about that. balling. So we don't have to do all that. Yeah, that's yeah, a lot of things. But that was off the record, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> But check it out. All right, so you got creative, hey man, though. What kind of, well, what listen kind of questions are we? we, you, we, we, we off, you know, come on, my nigga. We off the kidding. top. We off the top. Nigga. You're my guy. You right. we, the world knows. If the world don't know, the world should know. All you got to do is check the catalog. Google us. You see, we got shit from back from 2008 on. Yeah. That too. That part. So look. So how the fuck. So I see you got creative with the shit, though, right? True life. You put the. Cuban K Soze. I know the movie and right. all that. That's where the second part came from. Yeah. Yeah. I just I added the K Soze. Um Usual yeah. Suspects, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, the Kaiser Soze is a character from the movie Usual Suspects. If you want to know why that was um impactful, that's the word I was looking for. Boom. Impactful yeah. for yeah. me as a rapper and to use it in my name. Uh, go watch the fucking movie. It's called The Usual Suspects, and yeah, you'll 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 get it and watch it all the way to the end. You'll get an understanding as to why, um, why I use that name. I could elaborate it for you. Yeah. Just like, just go watch the movie. Go do something with your and, son. And, and, uh, <laughs> Kaiser Soze's. <laughs> hey, you know what's funny? You know what's funny with the shit? Kaiser's uh, Soze's government name was Verbal Kent. So I used to serve that nigga with verbal. Oh, his, yeah, verbal. <laughs> God, verbal kid. Like, so, yeah, okay. Yeah. You know what? You yeah. know what's funny about that though is yeah. holding that name and knowing that part. It's yeah. like yeah. dude was like he had two different percent. Like he was the overman and like the super weakest criminal. The, yeah, yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So it's he, like he held his own. So every time you said that to me, I, at first when you said that, I was like, "What is this nigga trying to diss me?" No, no, that's how you took it. But no, 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 no. But I mean, yeah, obviously, we, you know, we got, he we was got the mastermind it. behind the whole little yeah. shit, nigga. But you gotta watch the fucking movie. Yeah, to the to, so to, go to watch get it. the analogy. Go watch get it. The analogy. Yeah. All right, so let Straight me give up. you a backstory first, right? And then she's gonna give you a backstory. On. You gonna give me a backstory? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay, gonna give go you ahead. a backstory on, on our introduction. Okay. She's gonna give you her backstory on our, you know, on the introduction. Oh, y'all introduction or my introduction? No, no, no. Her, you know, you know what I'm saying? Because she was from the rip, right? True life. So check this out. I remember that was just like okay. We all like we work out, play basketball, do all the shit, right? I met this nigga <laughs> in Burbank, California, at a gym called McCambridge, this right? Is very true. Like it's a true story. Like, I don't see if we no tell bullshit. the story the same. We're gonna tell the story the same. <laughs> Let me take, go ahead, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Like, all right, so we was we walked run up and down the court. The mm -hmm. game was already going on, game right? Was going for sure. And um, I think I don't know if I tried to catch one off the rim on you. You did, or I no, tried, you tried to, to straight up, or I tried you to tried run to up and up just dunk on you. Yes, right? you tried to straight up. Me. And Q was like, "Nah, we not having none." Of that. He said something like, "We not having none of that." I said it's it. Not no. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm not going to cut you. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. He said, well, he said like, well, no, nah, this is not going down. I, I forgot whatever. I said, all right, you sure, my nigga? And it got a little tension. And I said, you sure, my nigga? And I'm going gloves in this bitch. Right there. I, I that. Yeah. <laughs> like, go ahead, my this nigga. This is a real shit for all you niggas that tell stories with a touch on it, right? Yeah. I we walk in the gym. It was me and, and Rock. Shout out my nigga J Rock. And he was extra out. I didn't like Rock. And we, were, first he, scene. we was all but he he was yeah, yeah. I don't know. It, it depends on the day. He was we, loud. we each had our days. We we each had loud. our days. And he, he was the man with the lingo. Kingo at Kingo King, the lingo. We just shouted King you out. Lingo, Kingo right. underscore the underscore lingo. There you go. Support your friends. Look at my yeah, guy. Nah, fuck it. That's my guy. He in, he in uh, Kentucky right now and they're ducking a tornado or some shit. Anyway, uh, I remember we came in the gym and. You was dunking or, or some shit like that. You, you, you. I think you was warming up or some shit. And this nigga, this nigga can really fucking hoop, by the way. I go, I go. Um, he goes real hard, and I'm like, man, fuck that nigga. I ain't, cause to that to that day in my life, I'd never been dunked on. And then he, and the funny part about that is he was with me the day I got dunked on twice in my life, and I don't in the same that. fucking day. I but anyway, but that. anyway, I don't remember that. This nigga was I'm like, man, fuck that shit. It's true. Like, Eaglewood, Wesley, nigga, we in Burbank. We don't know what the fuck going on. Yeah. I'd be like, like eh, nigga, nigga, nigga dug on me. 
we gonna have to catch it, nigga. <laughs> and I said that before the game even fucking started. So then this nigga really like tried to I'm dunk on me. Like he didn't like like I he's like, oh these niggas think they and then they get tried to dunk on me. But the funny part about that was like I like I respected that. I, I, I was like, all right, man. He didn't he didn't get it. He I got fouled. He got fouled. It, I'm fouling niggas. But I was like, oh, okay, my nigga. But he really stepped up to the plate. Cause at that point we was like I call it spade to spade. We was a little too extra out yeah. out there in the rain. Was just like niggas out here is busters and all kind of this shit. That's mm -hmm. what that's what was going on when we was coming out. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he really you know he, he tried it. You know what I mean? That's you know that's like not like the nigga yeah. tried to shoot a nigga or nothing like that. But still, what happened with that? Um, <laughs> this is like go ahead, okay. keep going. Yeah, okay. Um, you tried that. I was like, y'all fuck with that nigga right there, man. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't kick it with that nigga. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then I think Bird ran into you. Uh, nah, nah, nah. Let me, let me let me take. Let me let me take it. I mean, not Bird. Nigga, yeah, I said your own name. You're, Rock, you're yeah, Rock ran. Into Rock me. ran into you. I was on. I was in a uh, Bolo mission in Hollywood. Yeah. Just just going just going about my shit. Like you know, what I'm saying Bolo. He ran into me. But let me bring it back though. Mm -hmm. So. Like during the intermission of games, we would uh, go outside, and, you know, smoke weed, smoke cigarettes, whatever. And I start <laughs> cliche and conversation with the nigga, and the nigga told me he did music, right? I said, yeah, nigga, I fuck with the music too. Yeah. We immediately went yes. to the car and played each other's played each other's shit. Ah, right? shit, I forgot. This that nigga part. played Four Fingers. Remember Four Fingers? I do. And I was like, nigga, I'm fucking with you. I'm that fucking with you. Song. When I heard Princess V, when I heard that shit, that I was like, I'm fu nigga, I'm fucking with you, my nigga. I think I think Stro, who y'all had on the show before, y'all y'all yeah. keeping up with the shit. Stro uh, yeah. was on the show two episodes ago, I believe. Yeah, something like um, that. He was episode two. Yeah, so at Mumble Rap Killer, check him out. Battle Cat, little bro. Um, he he I always credit him. Forgive me that look, because I think he put that song itself mm -hmm. on his uh, uh, on his mixtape. Yeah, on his first mixtape, and then we I'll had one honest. together. What is it, Evers? Evers? No, it wasn't that one. It, it the was, first one I think was Quality Over Quantity. Quality, right? quality Over Quantity. He put that on it, and then we had a song over the Busta Rhymes Full Moon beat that Dr. Dre was that was hard. Yeah. So when, when, once I started fucking with Stro, because at that time there was a lot of they had a lot of traction. Him and uh, Glasses. Bishop Lamont, dudes like dudes are still around that like nowadays problem. Um, Nipsey, we got a story about that. Nipsey was always we, on, was we, always on his own. This, we got a story about that. We I got, like as far as I know, like you know what I'm saying. Like that. a lot of the Slots people. Lost boy records back in there. A lot. Of, we got a story about that. Yeah, there's a lot behind that too. But shout out to Nipsey. Yeah, man. Pick up. Five, four, three. So yeah. Um, mm. The um that era, the New West movement, um, you know, names like we said, Stro, Glasses, Problem, um, Bishop Lamont, Dim Joints, Day One, um, just a, just a bunch of Absol, Il Camille, uh, so like, Shout out just, to Il Camille. Just, just, of course. Il Camille, you was course. just on um Insecure. She was on Insecure. I saw that. I had to. Hear you know that what? Shout out. Bird. Shout out Insecure in general. Like everybody over there in the office, of Issa Rae. Mm -hmm. um, I'm from Inglewood, and I know Mill is too. So, you know, for people like us, that's just like for me. I'm for sure. I know it's just it's super dope. I'm not salty that they didn't use my song for season two. <laughs> I feel you. I didn't let that breathe. I'm not salty that like five niggas from Inglewood came around after my own fucking to try to talk to me. He was like, oh, nigga, you can just shoot your shit to the homie. You know, we fuck with uh, her brother. Yeah, and I'm I like, said. nigga, I just stopped talking to the music supervisors last week. So thanks for it. That makes me sound better, but I'm not. Like, I fuck with the show. I do. I'm good. There's an episode tonight, so y'all should definitely go watch that shit this Sunday. Um, but all of that. Me, unfortunately, I can't fuck with the show because she like that weak-ass nigga that's on there. But continue. Who? Oh, wow. Daniel. That's my he, He's a good dude. He a good, he's an all right guy. Nah. I wouldn't let him fucking like, jump. If we you, homies. If, if your girl. Listen. If your girl was on the you, you wouldn't Yo, like I, the I, nigga. Can I explain something to you? Well, I'll put it on the air. Can I play something to you? 
I'm a, and this is not no, snatchy, no, this, no, this is not that no. Means you wasn't mine no, to this, begin this with. Is, see, here you go. Yeah. This was this is not no shame. But I got the nigga, I got the nigga info. I talked to you him a info? couple times. We're not up. doing none of that type First of shit. Of all, Look, I don't man, need no. nobody's info you when I got yours. He's a great. She don't want nobody but you as this is nigga. It's gonna be. I'm just giving an opportunity. But shout out to shout out to Insecure. Because one, one of the girls, because one of the girls on the show <laughs> is from uh, graduated from my high school. What Shout out to that? Skyline High School. She's a little. She's um. On, she works with her. Know her name. I don't remember the girls. Look at Mama's you. Yeah, Look at you. We got to edit that out. That well, at least tell us who she is now. What girl is she? All right, um, back to the new West shit. She's 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 um she's mixed. She's on my Facebook. That's. She, she, we weren't like close like that, but we knew of each other when we was at Skyline she High School. Young in California. She, she works she with her at the school. She works with Issa at the school. She, at the last episode, she was giving um, Issa some direction. She came over there and to her desk and was like giving her some direction. Oh, the white girl? And she's mixed. Frida? No. White girl. Isn't that the, the white girl? Frida? Frida is the white girl. No, she's not white. She's like mixed. Maybe she's uh, Asian of some kind. I'm going to watch that. I got to get her name. I forgot Oh, her name. that's different. Okay, I got you. Yeah. yeah you she's not a main player in the show, no, but you. she makes her remarks and she's a little funny. And she's like, but we'll, well, shout we'll, out we'll, edit, we'll edit it out. We'll we'll shout out Insecure. And, 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 they, and what, they, what they do in the city all the time is good, too. Um, I know they, they used to, well, they did it in Market Street a couple times. This year, I think they did it at the Coliseum. Um, they might have done something in the city, but... Uh, shout out to him, man. Regardless. Yeah, that's good for somebody to come yeah. up the way that they did. So. Ain't what coming shout up in these little. Shout out to Insecure. Yeah, uh, hey, shout out to me. Hey, on yeah, some real shit, though. Let what's me up? ask you this, though. Okay, what's up? What was your first musical project? Uh, it was called, <laughs> obviously for the, for the Kaiser Soze deal. It was called the, No. What was the one I heard with no, Five Fingers? What was no, that project? No, name? no, no. What was no. that? One? I, you know what? I, I realized something. And I was at my cousin's house, uh -huh. my cousin Cass, and I was just leaving it. His name was Cass, don't worry about it. Um, <laughs> Shout I out found to Cass. a CD that had all of the old music that we had done, and it's a lot. Of, it's like, you want some of the songs, nigga? Uh, um, I think the first one that we like put together, we was just like writing shit on CDs and, yeah, that, and that, that, you know, that doing shit like that. It was uh, the BOM. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> it's the shit, shit that we I got you know this I shit got funny. It's called uh we called it blacklisted. And I would have people call me out the blue, like, yeah, uh Can I speak to Cuba? And I'm like, who in the fuck is this? And they're like, yeah, this is such and such, you may be at this show. Cause we be everywhere at that time. Like niggas was doing their shit, like and we was fucking with people that was doing their shit. So we go support everybody else that was moving, like. Right. You know, business was, was with Dre and Glasses signed 1.8 mil and yeah. Stroh was doing this shit with Battlecat. So, yeah. I was, nigga, problem had they shit go. I'm like, I was at all these nigga shows. Like, yeah, yeah nigga, I had a back pocket full of written on ass CDs. Like, you nigga kick me up. Shit. Yeah. Like, you know, and, and niggas would call me, like, wave me back and be like, yo, uh, you gave me this shit, nigga, like a month ago. At this. And niggas in LA, we got to change this about ourselves, but niggas in LA don't fuck with nothing. Like, we don't fuck with anything, nigga. Like, anybody ever pass you some shit? We just so fucking cocky. We just overlook. But we always play it like this. Oh, yeah, my nigga, I'm a, I don't fuck with this. You know what I'm talking about? And then later on, we'd be cleaning our car and then find it a month later and be like, let me pop the shit in. Oh, this nigga really got time. Like, we're bad bosses. and high. Like, none of us could work at HR and shit. You know what I'm saying? We'll hire all the wrong motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Like, fire all the good niggas and shit. Like, like... That's just how the fuck we are. So it's like I, I I would always run into a bunch, like a bunch of niggas and be like, yeah, uh, you don't remember me? I'm like, nigga, from when? Yeah, yeah nigga, that, that was, was at a show like you know two three months ago. Like, nigga, how are you just now using that number? You yeah. and it's almost in your mind like you bitch ass nigga. I gave a CD that night. Nigga, you supposed to hit me yeah, yeah. three days later. Nigga, like, but you know it is what it is, man. And you so and so it. for for the audience out there, I just want to let you guys know, you know, I've witnessed on several occasions. Uh, fans, you know, we're somewhere, we're at a uh, a club of some sort, 
and people pull up and they really plan to say we should. So um, on that note, you know what's so funny? I wanted to ask. That's that top boy. You know what's funny? That that one time we was outside the bar and look, right. you have you know some weirdo that? shit yeah, going on, said. my nigga. I did. Like, like the nigga was just we in the car. We I mean no, we we in the smoking lounge area, smoking area, kicking it, and it's a nigga in the car parked three spaces over. He just snap slapping cube shit. He just slapping no cube shit. Out of I was like, my nigga, I, like, I, like this is first, my first experience of the shit of that magnitude. So I'm like, my nigga, you know, he said, like, oh yeah, that nigga. I was like, yeah, I hear it. And then like, it's not like that though. Like, no, you did it not. It sounds so like terrible. So he should. Well, he's he's very humble about it. Like, I know the gentlemen. dude. In the, no, I know the yeah. dude because it was first of all, it's down the street from my fucking house. The nigga didn't say hi or nothing, my nigga. Yes, yeah, so he came over there and talked to me. Just, okay, you know, okay, I got a story for y'all. So that day, yeah, that night, yeah, that night, remember, yeah. he was like, hey, if you got some more copies of your shit, yeah. I'm trying to get them. I'm like, okay, for sure. So, I went to where I go to get my, my copies and my, you know, whatever. And there was a specific day that I thought about it. And then, I ain't gonna lie, it was like a couple weeks later and shit, like whatever. I thought about the nigga and I was like, yo, I gotta make sure, because I, I had a with me in my, right. you know, in my possession. So I'm like, yeah, I gotta, I, damn, I gotta find this nigga. I don't know where he, but I know he be in the neighborhood. So I'm like, I gotta find him and make sure I get him this three, four, whatever the right, fuck. You're a man he's looking for word, him, like you know, like he asked me for this. And I'm like, yeah, I'm not finna be like, no, nah, nigga, I'm not giving you no more. You play right. that one, like the fuck I look like, bro. Like it's not that, it's not that deep. And the funny thing is, I went to this store, I went to Rouse, and. uh I pulled up and I saw his car outside. And I'm like, that's crazy. So I have my shit and I had him with me. So I went to the store and outside of looking for whatever alcoholic beverage I was looking for, I was just going like up and down. I was looking for yeah. this nigga because I'm like, your shit is outside. Yeah. So I, I couldn't see him and I was like, fuck it. So I went and got, you know, my shit and then I got in line. Somebody else got in line behind me. And then he got in line behind me. I'm like, yo, what's happening, bro? Like, He's like, oh, what's up, man, man? I'm just, and he always he always tells me, and I'm so appreciative of this, man. I swear to God, it humbles me every time. He's like, yo, man, I still be bumping your shit. You know, it's dope. I still want some CDs. And I'm like, you're in luck. I said, bro, I got him outside. The funny part about this is I said, I thought about you today. Today. And I've been carrying my shit around just in case. You know what I'm saying? And, like, I pulled in here to get some shit, and your car was here. And I was like, oh, okay, bam. Like, I, you know, I, I guess right. that's like the universe working or however that works, you know, whatever, I, whatever. I think what you're trying to say is it's, it's not just he's a fan. He Well, he's a fan. He's I, Although he lives in Europe, he's a fan. And so it was like, I can't just call this man. But I know his whereabouts. Right, no, no, no. And, yeah, we're and, not and, that and at close. the same time, you were like, <laughs> Yeah. I really want to make sure well, that my fans when they want to. You know what? He's dope in that aspect. Right. You know what? Well, because we know no, I, and I remember that day I was trying to find him on Instagram, and I remembered what he was affiliated with because there's a, it's him and another dude, and they they white dudes, but they they awesome, they they dope dudes, and they Clippers fans and shit too. So we share that bond. So it's awesome. if you don't fuck with the Clippers and whatever with you. Um, <laughs> And I was looking for, but it was his other homeboy page. So I was like, damn, that ain't his shit. And I think I like tried to send it to his homeboy, and then because like he was heavy on my mind that day for some reason. So it was really strange. Like I really tried to look the dude up on Instagram and all this kind of shit, and it was just like, you know, I ended up running into him, running into him anyway. And I gave him, you know, the shit. And he's like, yeah, man, I got some people that I need to hear. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, and that was this was about shit. This wasn't that long ago. This was. Like recently, this is probably a couple shout of weeks out ago. to Cuban Queso says yeah, fans. Yeah. Low key, but um, low key, the, the low fans key, really want to know a few things. Uh, Cuban Queso say they want to know what <laughs> we know you're a rapper, but we also know you can sing. So no, nah. the man can sing. He's being very humble right now. Goddamn liars! The man can sing. He can blow. And um, she's leaking information she should know about because she was in sessions. And I right. just want right you now. all to know, she should know about how talented the man is. But since, but the but fans want to know. But since I, I, but since I move with, the, window, that shit since I moved with my lady, and every move that I make, she was blessed to witness upon his vocal ability. I mean, earlier today, I, he, hit our, he was he was he was excited. We all start doing this earlier to today. To go into our <laughs> booth 
and lay down a couple of tracks. Can I say something? Shout out to, can we cheers to y'all relationship? Come on, what's up? Relax. Cheers. Shout out to that. Cheers. Please relax. Shout out to cheers. that. Please That's relax. Let's look at love. Yeah. You know right. what I'm saying? Hey, relax. Don't we, we Shout out to love. Already. What Martin say? Love's in your face. <laughs> He's funny. He's funny. Martin said that know. shit. Yeah, but tell hey, us, tell us when you came All right. to listen. We was in Beverly Hills. We had a session. My my boy Frank. No, uh, damn. I don't want to miss. Uh, not Frank. I'm Chris. Like, where are you going with that? Chris Mix. Chris. Man. Chris Mix. My little brother hooked me up with that situation Chris. with the engineer. White boy Chris. What's up? He had all the drops. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you like this. That was the best engineer. Oh man, that was my first that, engineer. Like that I indulged I in. Said, so we like had a session. I'm not gonna say that. On uh, <laughs> what what album was that when you did How to Love? The Lil Wayne no shit. No feelings. No feelings. He got it. Lil Wayne had no ceilings. The niggas had no feelings. Then, yeah, right. That was right. He did, did How to Love. I did how to love. Right. You wanna you wanna do some of that on the show? No, we're not doing that. that. Yeah. We're not doing no live performance. There's no way. It's not gonna be my live. guy Because you're gonna have to come back from a commercial yeah. break for that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. I just now, think I'm it's just... really important that people are able to see you buy the music. Artists. Buy the music. Look at the links. I put check everything the bio, in the bio. Everything in the bio. Yeah, I check put everything in the bio. Look. Sunday at a bio. So the nigga did Look. how to love. You had to love. And I never this was live taping. When I said, nigga, I bet you can't one take. You can listen to the song. All that shit was live, my oh, nigga. I forgot. It I was said, I want to. I said, I said, I bet you did challenge me too. I said, nigga, I bet. He Chris did. already hit record. I said, I bet you can't hit one. Take that shit. You can hear all the shit. Right? You can like, hear it. In the, I forgot. All at, the, at the beginning. I never go shit. back and listen to that ever. But. Maybe you should. That no, nigga no, had no, a no, 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 no. Be, the only song. reason why is because it was a it was about a point in my life where I was honestly. Um, honestly, turn it into like I, I took it serious on some real shit, and, and most people don't really, even I think people just thought I was doing a song that was cool at the time. But at, like I'm in tune with my emotions and shit, yeah. right? Um, yeah, we know that about you. I, well, I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm a Sagittarius and shit, so I'm in tune with every emotion. And some people always tell me the only, the, the most, the emotions that I'm best at expressing is anger and love. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to that musically, I write shit. When I feel the emotion, I have to get it out, right? So right, but that day you didn't write it. You no, no, I didn't. No, I, 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 didn't, I, didn't, I, didn't it. I just recorded it in one shot. It was, but one shot the thing about, it was it was about it was kind of like making an atonement for a relationship I was in and an explanation behind it, and then just moving on from it. You know what I mean? Because I really, at, at, in that where I was at in that place, and I remember this, I really had to let somebody yeah. go. Yeah. For the benefit of the both of us, because of where we were at in our lives, yeah. and shout out to love. Yeah, I mean, you know, like since then, you know, it's I, I've been like, you know, everybody's happy and shit. So I don't want to make it seem like a thing or like I'm stuck on that. But in life, sometimes you have experiences where, you know, you it's either a blessing or a lesson. Sometimes you're somebody's blessing. Sometimes you're somebody's lesson. I don't know how many times I've been somebody's lesson, but you know it is what. In that regard, I was definitely her lesson, lesson for her to find her blessing. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and and that was like in order for me to deal with that, not because of her, but because of me, and just releasing the fact of knowing that I was just a dog ass nigga in a relationship with a great person yeah. that deserved more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I had to release my demons well, on that one. I had to release my demons on that one. I mean, I don't, not to just, I, yeah, I don't man. think anything justifies anybody's actions. At the same time, I do think, honestly, that it is important to acknowledge, you know, some of the environmental things, age, uh, uh, circumstance, etc. And for us to be able to say, okay, um, I understand your position. You know what I'm saying? I think that's important, especially when it comes down to love yeah. and other people and how we interact with each other. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad that you were, you were able to, you know, explain that and everything. And, and obviously, if you pick up the music, you will be able to see, you know, the vulnerability behind hey, it. Hey, I'm going to tell you like this. That's very well said. Yeah. yeah. You know clean, clean, yeah. Clean, clean. Hey, hey that 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 this nigga well got me better. The circles that he brought me around got me better. All those names you mentioned earlier, I wouldn't know none of these niggas if it wasn't for this nigga. And if it wasn't for McCamish, me playing basketball and us running into each other like, well, nigga, I do music. Nigga, I do music. Let's go to the car. Let's you, see what we got. But it's also kind of like what you said, right? Like, 
as a hooper because, you know, yeah, <laughs> we go play ball. Shout out to Nike. <laughs> Yeah, that too. Honestly, like right now, but like when we go play ball, like your your competitive like your, your competitive drive is different. It's like yeah. you can't go to the B court. I you understand what I'm saying? Like like no, I'm saying any like any anybody in general that's good enough to play on the A court. It don't matter if you sit, you gonna sit. Don't go. You don't go to the B court because you don't tarnish your. Uh, your your efforts, yeah. you understand? Yeah. You don't tarnish yeah. your not as so much your image, but your efforts. It's like if you're gonna have a bad game, you have a bad game on the highest level. You understand what I'm saying? You don't go to, you don't go to. Uh, it's like this: a bad day in the big leagues is better than a great day in the low level in the minor leagues. Every day of your life, right? Every day of your life, right? Right? When you're around the best of the best, a bad day in around the best of the best. Is better than a great day around the worst of the world. Like, like there, like there's, there's, like there's being, being acclimated to the highest level of competition in, in itself is a blessing, and it says a lot about you. It says a lot about your character. It says a lot about your drive. You understand what I'm saying? I took that on to the music shit. Y'all niggas got me better. Like You're supposed you, to. the Ryan the Shines, the Mike Strohs, being around y'all motherfuckers, my nigga. I fuck with Ryan Deshaun heavy, and that's just a side, that's just a sidebar. Like, shout out to that guy. I'm, a, I'm one of your biggest fans, my it's nigga. It's some people out there. I, like, I would have you on this show. I would have you well, on this show they're just to praise you, my they're nigga. Gonna know who he but is. it elevates so, Colombo Black. Elevates. He's, they're gonna bless our show. Colombo, I need you, bro. Like, Hello. y'all niggas made me better. Shout bro. That's just, an invitation. Just fucking with y'all. That's not a shout out. That is you know an invitation. It elevates though, man, because there's so many people. Like for the people that we've named, and even just amongst the people that are sitting here have encountered and worked with and collaborated with and done yeah. stuff with people that other people that may watch this yeah. are affiliated with. You know yeah. what I mean? Or, 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 yeah, or that are. they follow or that they, they listen they got to. Their like, own way like people that's on, booming like, right like, now, yeah. like on the way up, came through these people, but around these, like, right. you know what I mean? Like, it's, it's like, I'll tell you this story. Of separation, man. Like, like, I, I knew Stro for two occasions to, through you and through my nigga Jap. My nigga Jap, because that's his brother. Shout out to my nigga, Jap. My nigga Jap, right? And um, in the building. Was, and Jap through the kid, was, though, Jap put me on who the fuck Kendrick Lamar was because right. he threw Kendrick Lamar on his mixtape. Kendrick Lamar, I never heard of. K and then, and then K and and he, he's like, he threw that nigga on his shit. I was like, oh, okay, this nigga, right? And that was through Stroke, but that was through him and Jap. I still had that picture on my IG of um, the day I went to that uh, the show for Mike Stro, and it was I want to say it was at the Brass Monkey or some shit. But there's a picture, and the funny thing is, I remember seeing the picture before, and I think it was posted like Facebook or something. And a couple years ago, like maybe a few years ago, uh, my boy hit me. And was like, nigga, is this you in the picture? And DJ Sour Milk had posted it. Mm. They shout out Sour Milk just because I said your name. I don't know you personally, but God bless you. Good, God so bless. it's a picture. And honestly, in the picture, it's so much shit going on. It's like me and Rock was there, right? <laughs> and you can see me very distinctly because I'm... Listen, don't ever be my friend and have some shit going on. Like, I show up to your show. I'm the loudest nigga. I'm in the front. Yeah. I throw my hands up. I yeah, scream for niggas. That. Like, I, I'm on all that type that. of shit. I've always he's been that support. type of nigga. He's a supporter. Always been that type Obviously, of nigga. He's on the stage. So, I, like, I don't give a fuck. I don't care who looking at me. Like, I'm here for you. I don't give a fuck at the, at the crowd. Like, who is this nigga? I didn't come for you, nigga. Don't yeah. ask who I am. Yeah. I came to scream and holler and turn up for my motherfucking people, and I don't have no problem doing that. I pay the entry for you. I paid my 10 to turn up louder, nigga. Yeah. How about that? If I get in free, my volume it might be a little. If I gotta pay, I'm gonna get louder. Fuck it, nigga. You know what I'm saying? But my thing is this. There's a picture. You see me, like, very distinctly. I'm in the back, like, yeah, all this shit. Rock right in front of me doing what he do. But there's so many different people and problems in the picture. If you yeah, look close enough, saying, I like, think Jelly Roll is in the back. You have me and all legendary, that type of shit too. The like, legendary Jelly saying. Roll is in there. Uh, El Prez, shout out him and to uh, especially him and Quiz for what they doing right now with that Payday LA shit. Anyway, yeah. That day, uh, somebody I used to fool with got in touch with somebody else I used to fool with, 
and I got to meet him that day and we went to the party. So my mission was to get drunk, but it was like at least two to three like fine ass females in my job that I might have had a shot with and I fucked it off with everybody because because of them two females I was dealing with at the time I went to the party and I fucked it off with some bad ones dude. and which of called it brought it to my attention and he said he was like there was a song y'all did it was a I figured out it was the up joint Right? Oh. And he was like, nigga, oh, was you, he, was yeah. like, he was like, he was talking to this girl, she used to be my manager, this Asian chick. And she was fine, she was cool. Shout out to, I'm not saying your name. Um, <laughs> and I was talking to her and he was like, dude, you like, you was like, you did the, the verse that you did from that song and she didn't know you did music. But he was like, you know, the shit raw, the shit hard. And I'm like, okay. And he has to explain these things to me because I for, fucking forget. And he goes, nigga, you had her. Like, she was like mesmerized. She was like, oh my God. And he was like, for some reason. <laughs> he said it for some reason. He just went into this whole ordeal about why bitches don't listen. <laughs> and she just looked so thrown off. <laughs> and I knew like I was, it was probably because of what I was going through with the other ones. And he was like, you had her. like, And then you was just like, and she said something, and you was like, see, it's y'all problem, like, y'all don't listen to da 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 And then she was instantly like, what the fuck's wrong with this thing? So I'm like, yeah, I hope that's not on camera, but if it is, what it, it is. You guys know something about me? All right, cool. So check it out. <laughs> so you had usual suspect. Uh-huh. No, no feelings. No feelings. Mm -hmm. And then you went straight to iTunes with... In real life. In real life. I and now your new one that you're about to do is... Beautiful Struggle. Tell us about Beautiful Struggle. Um, it's gonna be a terrible. Album. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you know what? There's. I don't know why. I take I take time with projects. I don't know why. I just like that. Um, I don't have a process, to a degree, right? Like, I'm a creative, so there's certain things that come across immediately. And there's things that take time to build upon. I, I try to be authentic as possible. You know what I mean? I know as uh, musicians, we kind of embellish certain things a little bit for popular um, synopsis and shit just for people to listen to. Um, but I try to keep it as 100 as possible when, when, it, when it comes to the music and maintain the integrity of the craft. So for with all that long ass, you know, interlude and shit, um, Beautiful Struggle is honestly a story about the process of becoming important in music. Mm. Right. So what's I, what, what's your concepts and what's your topics on this beautiful struggle? What the fuck does beautiful struggle mean? Have you ever heard someone explain to you that it's not the destination, it's the journey? Yep. Mm. Okay. So it's your, it's your diaspora. What? <laughs> it's your diaspora. It's another word for journey. You said what? Diaspora. Oh, I'm you like, said I said diaspora. I'm like, I what the fuck do aspirin have to do with this? It's this wine. I'm like, what the fuck do aspirin got to do with this? Diaspora. Di diaspirin. All right, cool. Um, she wants me to die off aspirin, basically. <laughs> So, OMG, never. <laughs> OMG, oh my God, hello. But it's your diet off aspirin. That's what I heard. Never. That was That's a funny. subliminal. I right, know. Cool. That's That's no, what I we mean, got beef. What it Fano, is? He and I, we got beef. Well, my whole, my whole, nah, it's never that. My whole thing is, if I look back over the course of all my, um, all of my projects, and not that they're all perfect, it's just they all kind of represent where I was at at the time, right? Um, so Beautiful Struggle is kind of a, it, it, it's going to be a collection which is kind of a backstory after um, what follows in real life. Because in real life was literally that. It's like literally every single thing that I was going through in the year and a half that it took me to make the song. I mean mm -hmm. to make the, the album. The album. Right? Okay. Like literally. Was it planned that way? No. It just happened that way. Mm. There was because there were so many different moments. There was a moment where we were working on songs to make an album, and then there was space, and then there were times where we were just recording songs, and some of them were good and some of them weren't. And then there was a time where we were like, "Yo, we need to finalize this. Let's stick to a date." 
put a date out there, stick to it, and let's make that happen. Okay, yeah. boom. So then it was about the business of finishing and completing. But also in the midst of that, there was, you know, situations with employment, you know, regular life, whatever I had going on, relationships lost, relationships gained, you know, friendships lost, friendships gained, turmoil between, you know, me and my partner that I was working with, and then reconciliation, all kind of different stuff, you know, growth and development, um, trials and tribulations, there was a, a bunch of stuff, and it was, it was, it was very honest for all 16 of those songs, and even the interlude, and interludes and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Like, even with the content that was shot by this guy and you, you know, you were there, you were part of it too. And a lot of the, you know, the visual you information. Know I got a whole had. movie. I'm pretty sure. You know, I got it. I, nah, I put mean, it out well, now, all bro. of the visual aid, like, yeah. that you guys had, yeah. and, you know, and, and even when I was. Movie. I'm going to put out that movie, bro. Well, well, think I'm it's, gonna it's, 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 I'm going to have you come and do your voiceovers and shit. Like, I get it. I got yeah, a whole like, whole deal. Watch. Even everything that was going on while that was being recorded. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, there was also stuff that was going on for myself as an artist and a writer and a creative and a contributor that was happening while this project was manifesting itself. And I think those things happening in the midst of me creating the album kind of pushed me more to finish it. You know what I mean? Because I was I was coming into a, a, a new um, a new part of creativity. And, and and being recognized as something different other than just an artist that maybe some people did or didn't give a fuck about. To be honest with you. So I guess to follow up with this, I, I, I think everyone wants to know, is there a message that you have behind your music? Like, do you is, have is a there, message? Is there one? Like, if you had to tell your audience anything, despite the process, despite your vulnerability, or... I said, is there a message that Cuban queso say has to give to the world? Um, is there a distinct message that I could like tie to like a quote or some shit? Like, no. But there's there's a few things that I always try to keep in line and 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 come across, and that's authenticity, mm. um, respect. Mm. Um, appreciation for the craft and integrity, right? Now, recently, I'm I'm on this thing where I, I I'm like I'm about love, right? I've I've never been a hater. I, I'm one. I'm probably one of maybe I don't know how many people can, can say that shit confidently. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you can find a nigga that can ever say, "Well, that nigga hated on me," that nigga's probably lying to you. Yeah, I feel you on that. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I don't, I don't, I, I don't, I, I don't find the, I don't find the fucking joy in it. I've never seen the result of anyone hating on somebody else and becoming the richest nigga in the world the next day. So it's an exercise yeah. of futility. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 I don't. It does nothing changes for me when I take. What most people consider the harder route and say, I want to see that person win. Mm. All right, let me ask you this then. Because I'm on the outside looking in. Uh -huh. And then, you know, I've been around with you and I creep around with you. Amen. And <laughs> at the same time. <laughs> well, I, I got to sit up now. Like, That's why man, I got to sit up now. I listen, can't lean on the couch the way. But feel this, this though. The, the hard I'm going to hit you with this one, bro. Shit. What's up? And man? you live. Mm -hmm. My nigga. Right. Do you feel like these niggas is hating on you? Because you better than a lot of these niggas, bro. You are better than a lot of these niggas. He's better and, than all these niggas. And. Like, like as as a full fledged artist, my nigga is writing and and, and presenting songs mm -hmm. and doing all the shit, my nigga. Do you feel like these niggas is hating on you, my nigga? And I had to be one hundred percent honest with you. You know, my, like today. You can be political. To my, no, no. Be if, political. I, if I be one hundred percent honest with you today, you know what my answer would be. No. I, I, I don't. I disagree. And, and, no, no, no. Here's, well, here's, I disagree, let me, ladies let me, and gentlemen. Let me give you my reason why. Let me just say that. I uh, disagree, but go ahead. Let, let me give you my reason why. Because why? there was a point where I felt like that could be true. And, I, and I'll be honest. 
There was a point where I feel like that. All right, all right. Better question. Fuck that. Scrap that, ladies and gentlemen. You know what it is. Nah, I'm not trying to hear none of that bullshit, bro. Like, I swear, I'll give you right. honest, bro. Like, do, all right, fuck that. Thing. Do you feel like you better than these niggas? Absolutely. All right. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna leave that. Like, look, is it obvious that you're better than I these niggas? Can I tell you something? No, is it obvious that you're I'm better gonna say than this, these I'm niggas? I'm gonna say this to you like this. There's a whole lot of niggas that I respect, and God bless the day that I opened my eyesight and mindset to understand why certain shit works in music, right? So at least I can find comfort in understanding why people gravitate to shit. Period. Do I feel? Creatively, musically, lyrically, as a rapper, better than a lot of niggas? Absolutely. fucking lutely Absolutely. fucking lutely I feel like I'm better than... Nigga, I, the higher percentage of niggas, at least on my end, on my coast, on my... Like, I, of yeah. course. Yeah. Like, they're, like, like they're, they're, for those of you, thing. because I'm going to have to elaborate, because for those of you who don't know, he writes his own shit. He writes Easy. his own shit. Easy. And I write for other people problem. too. And he writes and, and, great. He's very his raps are clean as fuck. No, but the niggas and are artists, bro. Like, can I tell you? The nigga made me better, my nigga. And I was the weakest nigga ever. The nigga, these niggas come you around him like, and I'm shitting on. Listen, let me, I'm better than a lot of you niggas. Can I fuck with them? Harder. But can I say something <laughs> that can I tell you something that was a blessing but was also kinda hard for me to deal with mentally? What? Not hard, but like it it kind of it kind of play with your mind a little bit. Um, being like coming to the realization, like, cause you know, I was an artist and now I'm like an artist and a writer, right? So contributing writing wise to people that you know don't need your help, but respect your talent. But on the flip side of that, where that talent doesn't necessarily for you translate to where you feel like it should, maybe, or you feel like, you know what I'm saying, like, you you know what I mean, like, oh, well, nigga, I should be on, da -da -da -da, on this tour, or this, da -da -da -da, this, or this, that, but instead, I'm getting called to the studio to write for XYZ, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and yeah. so that, that could kind of play with you a little bit, you know what I mean, because at the end of the day, it's still talent, it's still, you know, it's whatever, but, um, doing... That come with doing your research and doing your homework and trying to figure out and understand how the game works and why things happen this way and why people gravitate to these things. Because we in a different era. You know what I mean? And I, I, I've always, not always, but I've felt recently for a few years that I may be a generation behind okay. for a lot of different Do things. Do you feel like these niggas are scared that, that you would take their shine? Well, hold on. I have to cut everybody off before you even ask that question. <laughs> I think what you just said... Is that you're retracting yourself, that. and I think that you're just you've no, been I'm ahead perfect. of your time mm -hmm. for too long, and suddenly it's making sense to some people. But the reality is, if y'all would have picked up, if you guys pick up everything that this man has laid down and stuff like that, you guys will understand where he's coming from. But he's a talented individual, and I don't believe he's any talented. He's better than everybody out there. He's here. better than you. And I, better, and I honestly, this is just, this is, um, and, I, and I think it is nah, important stop, that relax. we stop humbling nah, ourselves when we truly just are, we're talented individuals, we're creatives, this man is a talented individual. You know why? He's because creative. I give you, stop humbling yourself, my nigga. Like, you know why? Because really I give, give you an honorable artist, bro. I'm going to say this like, like this. I, no, cute. Not, not, not on the humble side, I just feel like, my music would trans my music would have translated or would translate in a bunch of different areas. Absolutely. You're right, but right. earlier you said something different. You're overall though. What? You 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 I'm said you. that you are like behind. And that's like no, I No, no, I'm not, I'm not, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't say that to say that I'm behind. Are you talking about when I was like I feel like my music would have translated better in a different area? Yeah, like no, I to believe that your time at the time was great. Today is great, and I see a future. I've been seeing your your like when I hear you and what you recorded today. I'm like, wow, wow, this man does not stop. When, when I, and I don't think you, any artist should ever or any creative at any point should sell themselves short cute. of their ability to transform. Because if I'm wrong, cute. how come you're able to write for the young generation? Bro. 
So don't sell yourself that's short. That's why I fuck with and, you like, overall. Yeah, and I would also these, like to add these like, other niggas recently, is one dimensional. They they if they got bars, they just have bars. Right, and they say that you are artists, my nigga. You have bars. Yeah, I get that. You do all the shit. I get that. Well, I get that. And like, I think and like, I think the other thing that we're kind of talking Murray about is like, like the idea of Eminem. No, I kind of want to throw Eminem in this in this situation, in this conversation. Dexter is fucking your bitch. I want to well. Throw, I want to throw Eminem. Well, remember that? That's what he is. Yeah. But I want to throw Eminem in this conversation because I think and and Jay Z too mm -hmm. and Kanye because right now, well, Eminem is being criticized for you know his recent release uh -huh. and like the idea of him in like why way. does he have to in a good way? However you want to look at it. They did. Like, I heard he's it was dope. I like, heard it. I, 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 what I've heard, well. Dope or not, what? the conversation has been like, why does someone like him have to go at? He feel like he has to prove himself. Yeah, and I think what people don't fail to realize is that she how like come? Because Eminem, Eminem, I never said I liked anybody. I never like said. Like, I never yo, said yo, I liked anybody. You thought I forgot about that. So I don't remember that. Like but hold on, let me finish my point. I feel yeah. like people are like he trying rap. to say that someone like Eminem, who's a much older rapper, like Jay Z and Kanye can't come out today and put out music and I think that we put ourselves on a shelf life when it comes to rap and hip hop and it's like how come we put ourselves and give us give ourselves a shelf life and it is important in my opinion a twin purpose opinion that Eminem like Kanye and like Jay-Z and Dr. Dre Snoop Dogg to continue to push the age limit when it comes to hip hop because mm -hmm. like rock how can we can still listen to a uh, sell out YouTube uh, uh, concerts and we can't do the same for 50 cent you know like, the answer to that though answer or not I, well I know <laughs> I mean it's, it's it's okay I gotta be white you know let's just put it out there oh, no. but, but why but why do we have to be white no. why can't the culture just push it and and when you said, oh, you know the answer to that, yeah, but in this particular case, we're talking about someone like Eminem, uh -huh. and we're judging someone like Eminem, who happens to be white, in the hip-hop culture, to way, put out something, to put out something and challenge a younger generation, right. and with that said, I want to tell you that, it's like, you're not behind, and I think that it is important for you to ne ever, mm -hmm. never put a shelf life on this, because hip-hop has taken over, and it's become the new pop, and I just want you to understand where you stand in this particular element mm -hmm. and continue to elevate and continue to to be the driver of change. Shut the fuck up. You got it out. I got it out. I got it out. No. You had to get that out. I don't think anybody has to do that. That's a clean clean, my nigga. That's a clean clean. Come on, there's a clean clean, man. Two days I believe I'm the first person to tell you guys. That this is really super important, and and I hope hip hop motivation is hearing this. But I think this is really super important that we understand that it's why do we have to put a shelf life on hip hop? Why the fuck what? do we got to put a shelf nah, life on hip hop? Can I? Can I? Can I a, no, no are you say what you guys. No, I'm probably gonna be long. Okay, I ain't gonna be long. Either. I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna say this, and I'm going to preface my statement by saying that you you make a hundred percent valid points in, in in what you're saying. Um, and the funny part about what you're saying is today, today, I watched a, um, and it's funny you shout out hip hop motivation too, because I saw it on his page after I watched your guys thing and I went and checked him out and he had a post from, so shout out hip hop motivation. Um, he had a post from Scarface and Scarface, I, I, you can tell it's, it's, it was a little while ago. And Scarface was like, you know, it bothers me that there's a 75-year-old dude somewhere trying to dictate what's... That he's like, he's yeah. never been to these places. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Never been to the hood. Never been to the, the corner, the trap, the stoop. Whatever, whatever the fuck. Like, wherever we, whatever we call, wherever the fuck we from, all our shit. And he's dictating what's cool to the masses of people that we're trying to reach and he's never been to these places mm -hmm. but the thing about it oh and then he, he went he went on further to say i don't never want to look up one day and there be a new face and a new hero mm. because that's what happened to rock and roll mm. we invented the shit and one day there was a new face and a new hero and he said out his mouth i don't want to look up and see elvis running hip-hop Mm. So, 
I, I'm gonna start here, when it as it pertains to me, when I made my statement, it is known. I, 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 every, again, everything that you said was valid and fair and true and, and inspirational, and I, I accepted all of that. I appreciate it. Um, what I meant when I said my music would have translated better, I think my music would have translated better in a different era, is not so much because of the sound of it. Right. It's more because of. And I was never trying to say about no, the no, no, sound. no, no, no. I, I get it, I get it, I get it. Yeah. I, I'm just saying because I was raised off music in a certain era, but then I also think about the way things work, mm. right? The way things work, how labels work, how artists worked, then how music was structured, how DJs worked, how radio worked, mm. how uh, consumers worked, how people listening to the music were, how they were influenced, how they were. You know like how how everything became popular organically. If you, mm -hmm. you think about it, right? This show's called Thirty Five Thirty Nine, right? Right. So I'm right Thirty Six, right? And I not that it has anything to do with age, but I'm just saying if it does, then I'm Thirty Six. So let's just go into an era because we got Pac up and shit. So it's like <laughs> you know, if we think about the era, you think about this, right? Who controlled our music when we were in high school? We didn't control our music when we were in high school. We had TRL, which is Total yeah. Request Live, but that was for what? That was the best well, music out okay, so, so I have to tell it you, it as heads, much as you have, I'm about to cut you off right there, because I was not in Los Angeles, California at the time, although I was back and forth visiting, but I will tell you that like today, then, when I was growing up in the 90s, mm -hmm. that entrepreneur spirit existed, and mm -hmm. I remember seeing um, artists rap hip hop artists yeah. selling out the chunk of their cars right. and that today that concept guerrilla uh, marketing etc exists today and i don't think it's a coincidence i believe it, it's you know things take full cycle and the fact that hip hop is able to capitalize on that at a, such a short period of time it's only been 20 years and we're seeing the entrepreneur spirit come back around and i uh, Obviously, because of you know uh, changes in innovation and technology, but at the end of the day, it's not a coincidence that our culture is t on top today, like it was yesterday, because MTV became, was an alternative rock station, mm -hmm. and a lot of the hip hop stations were alternative rock stations, mm -hmm. and hip hop made that change back in the '90s, and today is still capitalizing on that. True life. So yes. you know, and those are facts. So. TRL, that may have been the case. Yeah. I don't remember TRL. We was yeah. Well, I I remember and hey. I know from the from from I mean and this is coming from a group of people that's from the West Coast right. where we um we embrace well, No, well, obviously we're not because we embrace we hip hop. We embrace the idea of battling, we embrace rap right. and well, made it our mean, own. This is what I mean. This is what I gotta say. This nigga right here will would destroy you. Sure. That's all I gotta say. Yeah, let, let me, let me, <laughs> probably. As an artist, let me go man. to my point. This is all. Of, when I bring up like TR, and then the niggas like, I met yeah. through him. No, this that was not this. No, 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 no. I, 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 The I, niggas I, I met through you would destroy the viewers. Like, much. Like, I'm telling you, my nigga. I, I I say this like this. When when you think of shows like TRL or like 106 in part, yeah. or fucking. That's Even it. if you go back far enough to the, the box, basement. yeah, right, the basement the is part of that. Those are the only content controlled situations that were available to teenagers. Absolutely, or okay? to to our genre. To 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 little no, no I, I, and I say that specifically, yeah. like to teenagers and kids, and I say that specifically because they were talking teenagers. Because kids. for the larger part of the last decade up until now, the popular music has been controlled 